you're actually not alive if you're not using a smartphone. Yeah. The problem now, they are all screen. And sometimes... The screen could break. Thankfully, they didn't break this time around. But when it comes to broken smartphone screen, there are levels to the level of the damage and what you can do with it. So before I talk about how to access a smartphone that had a broken screen, um, let me tell you about the levels. This one is a broken screen coin, but if I turn it on, it doesn't come up. And this one, these places are broken, but luckily enough, the screen still turns on. There is a completely smashed smartphone screen. This one is so bad. Yeah, this dead. So which one is your level? So let's go and tell you how you can assess information stored in the phone with that smartphone screen. You ready for that? Let's go. Okay, welcome back again to Smart Deport. When it comes to broken screen, I will give it level one, two, three. Now, starting from level one, level one is what I call partial broken uh, touch screen. So the reason why I'm giving them level is that there are different, different ways and approaches to go and assess any data in any of this phone. Assuming that part of the touch screen is not working or you're not able to use the touch screen, but you can see the screen. Now, it could come in different, different forms, but then one thing in common is that you won't be able to tap on the screen or to communicate with the phone. That's level one. Now, my classification of level two goes higher now for phones that are completely dead. You can't see anything. <laughs> you won't know whether the phone is even on and off. In some cases, you might be able to see part of the phone screen being on in a very dark room, as you can see right now. So those are what I call level two. It's more difficult to deal with, as I'll explain later in the video. But I already did a video on how to assess issues with level one and level two using USB OTG adapter, a mouse, or with a keyboard. Click on the cards right now to watch that video. And if you watch up to this point, a sub to the channel will be next level as we go into level three. Level three is a completely smashed smartphone and this one can have complications. Some things like the battery connection could be off, the flex cable between the motherboard or even the screen might be affecting something. So you might have to check whether everything is okay on the level three before you start thinking of, you know, assessing it through a PC or computer. And for the level one, two, three, you can always assess that through computer, but there are access restrictions. And that is what we're gonna talk about. It doesn't matter whether you're on the divide of iOS or you're on the side of Android, there is access restriction. Let's start from Apple. From iOS 11, Apple added a new restriction to USB on the face unlock and passcode. Of course, you will require password to even get to that setting. Imagine when your screen is broken. So there is what is called USB accessories. If you're using iOS from iOS 11, you get to see that on the face ID and passcode. Now it prevents your phone to be not accessed through USB after one hour it's been locked. That's bad. I mean, I don't know why they come up with that. And if you think that is the only restriction, wait until you want to connect iTunes and then to sync your file. You have to trust a PC or a Mac before you'll be able to do that. If you don't trust it, it's a big, big, big restriction. So now you have to think of how to go over that. And you have to also use a passcode on your phone before you can trust a device. So it makes it even more complicated. Now, if you want to back up encrypted backup, you have to create a password for that backup. And then if the password on your phone is not entered, you have to enter the password again of your phone before you do that. Come on, Apple. This is complication upon complication upon complication. Yeah, but that's what most YouTubers don't tell you about assessing a phone with broken screen. You have restriction you have to overcome. Now, let's go back to Android side of the divide. <laughs> the restriction is still there. In fact, for Android, you first of all have to go to settings and then and tap on the build number like seven times before you can turn on developer option. And you might require, you will require password to do that. Then you go to developer option, you turn on USB debugging mode. 
And there are a lot of things you can do with USB debugging to monitor your phone, copy file, everything. But then when you now want to turn it on, it, there's also another option to always trust this computer or always allow from this computer. So you have to turn that on also for you to be able to access it even when the phone is not on and all that. So these are restrictions that most people don't talk to, talk to you about. If it's on, if these things are on, you can reboot, you can do some commands from your ADB and fastboot and all that to your phone. So let's talk about some of the solution to this. So if you're having problem recovering data from your broken screen, Dr. Phone Recovery application is a good one. Now, I'm not recommending it because they have once contacted me to do a video about their product. And then I was looking at the WhatsApp backup and restore and discovered that they are doing something fishy. They will uninstall the main WhatsApp and install their own client and use it to do the backup. So I spoke to them. They did give me the right answer. So, But you can use their tools to restore apps. If you don't like that, there is Alt Phone. Alt phone is also a very, very, very important tool that you can use. Most of this tool will also require in some cases or most cases that you have USB debugging if you're an Android or from a trusted system if you're on uh, iOS. Then there is Visor app. Now, this one is for Android and it requires USB debugging. So if you don't have USB debugging turned on, then Visa might not do you a lot of good if your phone screen is broken. But then there is also another one called screen uh, stream over HTTP. If your device is connected to a Wi-Fi before now it's saved Wi-Fi, you can somehow turn it on using the information I gave in the other video and then connect it and you know stream it. You can also use Windows 10 um, <laughs> screencast to stream in and then control some of the things in your screen and get your information out. I'll be waiting for you in the comment section with any challenge you have accessing data on a smartphone that has a broken screen. And there will be extra support if you're a channel member. So please like and share this video so that you can get to more people. And until I see you next time, peace. Subscribe. I'll see you.